CAD design and the 3D experience is a growing part of our lives. And the developers at Dassault are doing their very best to make sure that the features and functions that we like in desktop SOLIDWORKS are available to us through X-Design. Let's take a look at how X-Design is able to match the capabilities of desktop SOLIDWORKS. The first thing I'd like to discuss is the variable radius fillet. Just like in desktop SOLIDWORKS, if we need to, to create a variable radius fillet, we simply go to the fillet command. You'll see it's one of our three options. And the selection here is also very similar to desktop SOLIDWORKS. If we need to pick a certain edge that we want to apply this fillet to, we simply do that. As we select our edge, we're provided with markers at the beginning of that edge and at the end of the edge. Um, these labels also allow us to input the values. So in this case, if I want to start off with, say, a 5 millimeter radius and have that sweep down to, in this case, a, a 30 millimeter radius, I can do that. Um, and you'll notice it gives us a nice preview uh, so that we see exactly what we're going to get beforehand. Uh, we can complete that command, and you see that we get this nice swoopy radius, right? But what happens if we want to maybe extend that 5 millimeters out a little further along that edge? Uh, well, we can add a variance point uh, and basically tell um, X-Design where we want to put uh, that point or basically how far out we want to hold that edge or what we want that radius to be at that, that point on that edge. So you can see here I just kind of went roughly halfway. Um, I wanted to maintain that 5 all the way out to the 30, and I'll go ahead and complete the command. Uh, and now you can see, right, I, I maintain that 5 all the way to a point, um, and then it starts to drastically go over to the, the 30 30 millimeter radius. So that's great for variable radius fillets, right? Again, duplicating the uh, the capabilities that we have in SOLIDWORKS. Uh, what we'll look at now is the, the option to flip our mates. Uh, in this case, with our assembly, we need to obviously assemble this yoke to this bracket. As I click on my, my paper clip, right, I select my faces. And as I go to add that mate in, uh, you'll notice it prepositions to it. Uh, and it also orients it in kind of the most convenient way to satisfy that coincident mate. Uh, but in this case, that's not really, while it is ge geometrically right, it doesn't serve what I need. So I'm going to go ahead and flip that orientation. Uh, and by doing so, what it's going to do is, is still satisfy that mate and apply the, the, the coincident mate right from the other orientation. Um, so that gets that added in. Uh, the one last thing that I need to do is obviously select the two um, cylindrical faces to get this concentric mate. And now I have a functional assembly, right? You can see I can spin that male yoke uh, right inside the bracket. So again, uh, just like desktop SOLIDWORKS, if um, our components end up in a situation where we need to swap that orientation or flip that mate orientation, uh, we certainly have the ability to do that right on the fly, right inside the command. So thank you for your time. Hope you have a great day.